the activity that we did a group time this morning was around um, we, we're doing some work around reflection we've just set up our light studio and so I thought spoons would be an interesting activity for these children to do and a couple of children had bought spoons earlier this week so by introducing objects that have similar characteristics it's a really nice way to start doing some of that sorting into sets and noticing the attributes and then doing some counting to go with it. One of the things I deliberately do when we're doing those sorts of counting activities is I do it the wrong way because what that does is it really pushes the children to think, hang on, that's not how it works. So for them to start really thinking much more consciously about what are the rules about counting. And it adds a sense of fun to it too. They really enjoy those activities. One of the strategies that we try to use is modelling appropriate ways of counting because it's actually a skill. So that by getting a child to actually touch and count the objects, it helps reinforce that kinesthetic, tactile experiences are actually saying the words. So that we use that as that is the way that we count, we touch and count. And by doing it together, we're just helping our friend to quantify the objects that we're trying to count. Spoons, but I've got a spoon as well. No. Yeah, it's not a shiny one. Not a shiny one, you're right. There are 13 shiny spoons. Wow, I wonder how many spoons are not shiny. How could we find out? Count, count. Okay, let's count them. One. Leave them in the rest position. One, nine, nine seven, seven, three. Put up your hand if you can tell me the problem. Have a think. There's a problem. What is the problem with how I'm counting those spoons? Cross your legs, Justice. Have a think. Casey, what was the problem? You need to count like this. One, two, and then three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, but I was touching each one. I was touching each one. Hang on, have a listen to Pacey, she's right. So if I start over here with one, then what do I do next? Two. Two, what's next? Three. What's next? Help Pacey. Four. Five. So what happens with children when we form these sets and we quantify how many objects are in each set, it's interesting for children to start comparing sets to see which are the larger sets and which are the smaller sets. And it's actually giving the children a way into doing that, the skills that they need, the strategies that they need to make those judgments about which set has more and which has less. Which is the biggest set? Um, Zoe's one. Which is the, the winner? Shiny one. Shiny. Which one, Zoe? The one. Yeah, what are those ones? Shiny. The shiny ones are the ones that win at the moment. Isn't that clever? Yeah.